Hey guys, Dr. Dobson. Uh, we're going to go over a big case that we did for a patient who presented with pain in the lower right quadrant. Uh, pain when biting. So we took an x-ray. It turned out that there was a catastrophically failed bridge from the 4.5 to the 4.7. The 4.5 had a root fracture. The 4.7 had an abscess. You could save the 4.7 if you wanted to. The 4.5 is hopeless, but we decided to just replace the whole um, shebang with dental implants. So we did an immediate surgery and a delayed loading. Uh, here's the surgical. After the surgical phase, we extracted the teeth, placed three tissue level implants uh, in the site. Three months later, got them back. Tissue looked good. Implants were well integrated. And then one week following, we made a bridge that looked something like this. Made it in-house uh, in the Roland 52D, um, bonded some Orem tie bases with uh, Panavia, and, uh, and just trued it down with our fixation screws. So we'll get into some teaser footage, and then we'll get started with the case proper. We flapped, removed the bridge, extract, reflected the bone so we could see the ridge, um, removed the root tips, placed our implants <clears throat> times three, Closed up and then um, scanned. Here's the scan. I used intraoral scan flags from DES. And then I send that to my um, buddy Pargev, who is a designer in Armenia. And he sends me back the design and I will plug it into the machine. Machine mills it out, desprue, sinter, and then polish. And then we will bond our adapters. And that's all there is to it. Um, get them back, screw it down, and send them home. So here is the case initially as patient presents. You can see that the 4.7 has some infectious looking tissue. The 4.5 looks surprisingly good for having a fractured root uh, underneath the surface. But we will uh, take a pan, get a, an approximate depth measurement for our implants. Probably just gonna go with tens in this case. And we'll start the procedure with anesthetizing uh, 1 in 200 articane. I think we, we bumped bone pretty early in this case. So I find actually a little pearl that if you contact bone too early and you want to penetrate a little bit more, you can swing the barrel over to the incisors. And then usually that will allow you to get a few millimeters more closer to the uh, mandibular foramen. So we'll inject and then um, long buckle, and then we'll start the procedure. We're gonna lay a flap here from the four five to the four seven. And we know that the four five is gonna fracture off from the root tip, the fractured root tip, but we say that maybe we can get the four seven out if we're really careful. So we take a set of cow horns and slowly rock it back and forth until we get some luxation and pray to God that the four seven roots come out with the bridge, which they ended up not doing. The bridge fractured off, leaving all of the root tips still in situ. So there's a bridge fractured and there it is. So we'll get that out of the way and start removing the root tips. It zoomed in because I uh, try to stabilize the footage and if there's a lot of movement, then the stabilizing has to zoom in to create a more smooth um, smooth image. We'll flap on the lingual aspect of the ridge so that when we pull it back, we can see, appreciate the entirety of the ridge. If we need to trim it down at all to increase the the width of it. We'll start working on removing the root tips here. Um, I think we'll lay our flap first. I'm gonna fast forward through that. And then we'll uh, get the root tips out with a periosteal. They should be pretty loose because of the infection and shouldn't be difficult to just get the periosteal in between the root tip and the socket. And there goes the four five. And then we'll get, I think we're gonna degranulate the four five socket. And you can see how much buckle bone has been lost. This is not a site that would be appropriate to place a dental implant unless you were planning on doing a large graft and then waiting four months for healing. 
So we're not going to be placing a graft anywhere near that four or five site. And we avoid the mental frame in that way anyway. So it's just going to be that block of bone between the five and the seven that we'll be placing our implants, planning to place our implants. So have our good access to the site. We'll start removing the four, seven roots. And we are not able to get a cow horn underneath it. So we're just going to section the roots in two, uh, just section the frication here with a surgical handpiece. So we'll just section them down to the bone and then we'll grab a periosteal and just try to elevate them against each other. I think the distal one's gonna come out first. There's the distal one out, and then we'll get the mesial. And as far as, uh, as far as implant um, positions go, we actually are going to use the mesial root socket as our where we're going to put our first implant, kind of going through the side of the cortical bone of the root. We're going to degranulate thoroughly. Sometimes we'll use a round burr on the implant handpiece. And then we're going to punch through the side wall of the, of the four seven socket and start getting our our um, Osteotomy bird is going to take a little pilot PA, happy with that. You can see that we went kind of through through the side of the 4-7 um, socket because there's a bunch of healthy bone down here and then all of this bone for us. There's a residual cyst here from where a 4-6 probably would have had an infection that didn't get gran degranulated. Not of great clinical significance to us. So we'll open up our first osteotomy to a 4.5 because we want to place a 4.8 by 10 tissue level in there. And we'll see that the mesial aspect of it is going to be covered up to bone all the way, but the distal aspect is going to be exposed. So I'm of the belief that you can graft or not. Blood is always going to turn to bone as long as there's enough bone around the area. Uh, but we did end up putting some graft material. We're going to flatten off the ridge here with this uh, shaping burr from Universal Shapers, just because the ridge was a little bit knife edged and we'd rather have the top part of the ridge have a nice, say, four millimeter, five millimeter platform. We're going to harvest some bone that is going to get chopped away anyway, um, and then use that, add that to a, um, to a little bowl that we are going to add to the distal part of this first implant because it's going to have those exposed threads. Like I said, I don't think it's absolutely critical to do that, but I actually just got that little um, bone harvester and I wanted to make use of it and try it for the first time. I was inspired by um, an incredible uh, dentist on YouTube called Salmo, Salmir Roca or something. He's a periodontist that has just insane, um, insane uh, surgical videos. I can link him in the description. Um, sometimes what happens with tissue level implants when we place them is that we bury the collar too deep. We like subcrustal threads, but if the collar sits in such a position that our healing cap can't um, sit on it fully. And you'll know that when you try to put the healing cap on, you'll feel some odd resistance. Then we have to wax some bone away from the collar so that, um, so that everything will sit flush on it. Gonna get an ISQ on the first implant, green by green, and then we'll flatten off our ridge a little bit more here with our shaper. <laughs> And then we'll start making our osteotomies for, for the second and third implants. And then we'll open up the uh, second and third osteotomy sites to a 3.5 millimeter 
diameter. And we probably could have got, gotten away with two implants. We went into the procedure saying that we we're going to do at least two implants. And we liked the volume of bone that we had, so we figured might as well use it. <clears throat> so we did place three. And we'll get a ISQ on all three of them, spin the third one down. And then we're going to bathe it with sterile saline thoroughly, cut away any bone that's impinging on the uh, healing cap placement. And here's our uh, autogenous um, bone graft material. We're just going to put it in this little carrier and uh, squirt it into that um, gap for the distal side of the that implant there. So I'm just going to squirt it there. And put a collar plug on top, gel foam, and then we'll just close it up with a couple sutures. <clears throat> and then that's going to be the end of the first appointment. Um, we'd get an x-ray. There's a clinical photo showing the site. It's going to heal up nice. It's always going to look gross for a couple weeks. Implants were surprisingly more parallel than we needed them. Um, but they look nice side by side and then three months later the patient returns we do a healing check take off the healing caps um, place the um, scan flags on top there's the scan flags just to verify that they're fully sat don't always do this but decided to in this case here's our scan output gonna send this to um, my guy Pargev who's a good dental designer a reasonable fees if anybody's looking for um, a strictly designer pretty quick turnaround and then we'll um, nest that into our argon Z STML block mill it out take our three um, des orum tie bases and the great thing about these little tie bases is that they give you about 20 to 25 degrees of angulation freedom for your screw channel in any direction so there's a lot of tie bases they call them angle screw channels but there's only maybe about a 30 degree window that that's actually allowable so i don't understand why everybody doesn't just use these ones because um there's no indexing required and then we will get the patient back torque the bridge check the bite check the contact and that's pretty much gonna be it for this one Plug the screw channels with Teflon tape, and this one is just temporary because we're going to go back in two to ten weeks to retorque. Fill it up with flowable light cure it, trim it back, and that is it. Feel free, to, feel free to subscribe if you want to. I also have an Instagram and apparently a TikTok. Thank you.